the very special thing about this Gulf Coast repository here at College Station is that we house about 150,000 meters of rock and sediment cores from the Pacific Ocean at this location. The core samples we have here are kept very cold. They're kept at about 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 4 degrees centigrade, and they're kept in this warehouse, this refrigerated storage area behind me. We keep them very cold for a number of reasons. Firstly, and most importantly, 4 degrees centigrade is the temperature of the ocean floor. So we like to try and keep them at the same sort of environment they were when they were uncovered. The second reason is because we want to avoid chemical changes. As you know from your chemistry class, the warmer something is, the quicker the reaction goes. And so chemical reactions we try to minimize by keeping them very, very cold. The other reason is that we don't want the cores to turn into core jerky. We don't want them to crack and shrink, and we want to keep them in pristine condition. We do this by wrapping them in a special film, and the film we have stops oxygen transfer and water vapor transfer to the atmosphere and keeps the cores nice and moist. Let's go now and have a look inside the core storage areas. This is an interesting part of the repository. We've got the last 170 million years of geological history recorded here in cores from the ocean floor. That's very important because the scientists who come and visit here can have access to an incredible geological library. All sorts of sediments, all sorts of hard rocks, just a vast array of material that they can use. And we have probably about 20 scientists every month come and visit the repository. We probably take nearly 50,000 samples a year for the international science community from scientists all over the world. Now these cores, probably the first thing you'll notice is that we have a section that are red and a section that are black. And that's because when the cores come up from the drilling rig, they're in nine and a half meter length, so they're quite long and really we have to chop that up into manageable pieces. So we chop it up into what we call core sections. Once we have the sections, we split them right down the middle so we have the red section, which is the archive half, and the black section, which is the working half. And these go on very different tracks throughout the ship. The working half is the one that we take all our core samples from for analysis on the ship and for analysis by scientists back on the beach. The red sections are the archives, and we try and keep these for posterity. We try and keep a record for the future of what we have now. The cores in the repository here go back to the very early days of a program that we call DSDP, and that was set up in the late 1960s. And that time, the theory of plate tectonics was just that, it was still a theory. And the early days, in the 1960s, we helped prove that theory by drilling holes across the Pacific Ocean, recovering cores and looking at the magnetic signatures in those cores. So since that time, the very early days of the program, we've been at the forefront of geological ocean sciences. This is a lab where we develop a lot of the equipment that goes to sea. All our equipment is specially built by the technicians here to do the analysis that are required on the ship. This instrument here, for example, is the first thing that the core sees when it's split and processed through the laboratory. Now you have to remember, we've got a nine and a half metre core to process, and those cores can come up every 30 minutes or so, so we have to push nine and a half metres of core through an entire laboratory in just 30 minutes. And so to do that, we develop what we call multi-sensor tracks. And these are little tracks that we put a core on the cores move through these different sensors here by a computer controlled motor and it captures data from these sensors very, very quickly and effectively. For example, what this core first sees as it moves through the track is this instrument here. And this is the gamma ray attenuation porosity estimator, which is a really long way of saying it tells us what the density of the core is. On the bottom of this is a um, a gamma ray source, a radiation source, and that focuses radiation through the core and into the detector here. So the denser the core is, 
the more radiation it absorbs. And so that gives us a very quick, very instant value of density. The second sensor the core sees is here, and this is the magnetic susceptibility meter. It's basically just a big copper coil, and the core actually passes through that coil. And as you know from your physics, any magnetic minerals in there are going to induce a current in this instrument here. And so that gives us an idea of how much iron and how much magnetic type minerals are in the core. And that's very important because iron gives us a, an idea of where the sediment is from. If it comes from the land, usually there's a lot of iron in the sediment. If it's actually precipitated in the ocean, there's very little iron. So we can put together a picture very, very quickly of the physical properties of the core and um, how it actually was composed, how it was deposited. Once the core passes through the magnetic susceptibility loop, its next stop is this piece of equipment here. And this is what we call sonic velocity. And it's like passing a little sort of earthquake through the core. And that gives us an idea of the internal components, the porosity, the permeability of the core. So we can build up a picture of its internal structure. People ask a lot why we actually keep these old cores. Some of our cores, as I mentioned, date back 40 or so years. And that's a very good question. And the reason we keep these cores is because we do data mining. And data mining is an interesting concept. Back in the early days of the 60s when uh, the ship was sailing, we had very few instruments on board. Now, science has progressed and we have all sorts of new techniques that we can use to analyze the cores. And this is a really good example here. This is what we call an XRF scanner. And it's a very recent development, and it allows geologists to look at the elemental composition of a core by using this instrument here. We don't just have ocean drawing program cores in the repository. We also have other collections. This collection here, for example, is the Seifod collection, the Seifod core collection. And as you can see, by looking at the cores, they're significantly different to ODP cores. These cores are four inch in diameter, whereas the IODP cores are only two and three quarter inches in diameter. Now this collection represents a whole transect through the San Andreas Fault, actually through the fault zone itself. So it's a very precious collection. These cores are just like moon rocks. They're treated very, very carefully when they're sampled. And it's a great pleasure and a great honor that we actually have this collection here in the repository.